my name is Nick. I'm a service technician here at the Inverter Service Center, and today we're going to be discussing the system control panel, also known as the SCP, made by Xantrex. So today on episode two of the Xantrex system control panel, we're gonna be going over the inverter charger settings on the control panel. We're gonna break down each setting step by step so we can make it easier for you guys to understand so you know what you're doing, where you're doing it, and why you're doing it. So if you guys are ready, let's dive on in. Hey guys, thanks again for joining us today. Um, so we are going to be discussing the second line item on the main screen. That's going to be FSW, then your model number, depending on what inverter you're using. So we are using the Xantrex Freedom SW2012, so it shows up as FSW2012. So let's go ahead and click or select this line item. The first thing we're going to see is mode. This is going to tell us if we're inverting, if we're charging, or if we're qualifying the AC. The second light item is going to be battery. It's going to tell you your DC voltage, your amp draw on the batteries, and if you have a shunt hooked up, it'll also tell you your state of charge. The third line item is going to be load. This is going to tell you the watts on the load side. It's going to tell you the AC voltage on the load side, and it's also going to tell you the amp draw on the load side. The fourth line item is going to be AC input. This is going to show you your incoming AC voltage, the amp draw on the input side of the inverter, and also the frequency of that incoming AC voltage. So if it's 60 hertz, 59.9, so on and so forth. The next line item we have is going to be where we can enable or disable the inverter. So we can turn it on or off here. The following line item is search mode. We can turn on or off search mode here. We have charger after that, and that's going to be where we can enable or disable the charger. We have force charge state, so we can actually set it to a bulk, a no float charge, or the float charge. That's going to be based off what your battery manufacturer specifies. We have equalize, so we can actually equalize our batteries here. All we'd have to do is hit enable or disable to do so. Again, that's going to be based off your battery uh, manufacturer specifications. Desired mode, we can actually turn everything off by putting it into standby, or we can turn it all on by putting it into operating. We have clear faults and warnings. We have viewed device info, so this is where we can click it. It's going to have our fault log, our warning log, and our event log. So if we had a fault, a warning, or an event, it would be displayed in these line items. So the last line item is going to be basic settings, and we'll click that. Once you click basic settings, it's going to open up another menu, and the first thing on this menu is going to be battery type. You can go in and select flooded, custom, AGM, gel, and then back to flooded depending on what battery type you're using. The next line item is going to be battery capacity. This is going to be based on what amp hour rating your battery bank is at. So you need to set you need to figure out first what your battery bank amp hour rating is and then set it to this. So the reason we're doing this is that your absorption time is the right time based on your battery bank max charge rate this is going to go back to the battery manufacturer again look at the specifications for your battery and set it to what they suggest so are we going to be using hundred percent of the charger are we going to be using eighty percent of the charger so on and so forth charge cycles you have your standard three stage charge and then you have two stage no float typically used um, for a custom setting for batteries whether it be lithium or again what your battery manufacturer specifies for you to do. You have recharge volts. Essentially what this is is if you went through the three stage charging and it floated out you can set this to a voltage so once it hits that voltage it'll refloat so it'll go through the float cycle again. You have AC in breaker and you can go in and customize um, what the amperage rating is on this. So if I set it to 15, the inverter will not exceed 15 amps on the input side. Now I can set it all the way up to 30 because this is only rated for 30 amps. Low battery cutout. 
is going to be a setting they add in here to protect your batteries. So if the voltage is set on low battery cutout to let's say 11.5 and your inverter is running a decent size load and it gets down to 11.5 then the inverter is going to stop inverting, it's going to cut off and it's going to go into low battery cutout and that's to protect your batteries so that you don't discharge them too much and cause permanent damage to them. Again, I've said it enough in this video, but a lot of these settings are going to be based off of your battery manufacturer specifications. Um, and that's going to be pretty much it, guys. Thanks for joining us today, guys. If you found this video helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. And stay tuned for the next episode on the Xantrek System Control Panel, Episode 3, where we'll be going over the advanced settings. Also, if you guys have issues with your own personal inverter, please shoot us a call. We love helping you guys out over the phone, so give us a call at 615-285-0611. Thanks guys and have a great day. Thank you.